In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to create a recessed custom faux hand carved dish based on the outside profile of any component or composite layout. Here for this tutorial, we're going to start with a brand new instance of Aspire and we're going to create a new file. This is going to be a single sided job. Our width is going to be 10 inches. Our height will be 8 inches. Our material thickness is going to be 0.75 of an inch. We're going to go ahead and zero off our material surface. Our XY data will be set to the center. If you do choose to cut this, then you may want to move it to your preferred location. Our modeling resolution is going to be set to very high. We want lots of pixels to work with because we're going to be creating a new 3D component. Our material settings are going to be Canadian Maple, and we can go ahead and click OK. Now the first thing we're going to need to do is to bring in some 3D content or a model that we can use to create our hand carved dish around. So we're going to go ahead and import in a component or 3D model. And in your files for your tutorial, you should see a, a CRV 3D file called horsehead underscore model. So we can select that and open that up. Now for this tutorial, we can do most of our work right in the 3D view. So let's just go ahead and pop over to the 3D view. And there you can see our horse head was imported in and it looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and look back down on that again. So the next thing we're going to want to do is to consider how deep we want to cut into our material. So in my case, I think I want to cut in about a half inch. That would leave behind uh, about a quarter inch on the back of the thinnest part of my dish. So to do that, or to take advantage of all that, we're going to go ahead and select our horse. And then we'll select it again. And we are going to add just a little bit of base height to this because I want to make sure I get a little bit of definition around the bottom of his neck here. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. And we're going to add in a 0 0.005, just a little bit. And you'll see that it'll just pop up just a little tiny bit, which is, which is all right right now. And that'll be exaggerated in a minute because we're going to take that whole composition and we're going to scale it up to be 0.5 of an inch. And you see now I've got a nice bit of definition there. I get lots of detail in my, my horse head because I've scaled it up, the shape height, I've scaled it up along with that base height. And that looks really nice. So let's go ahead and look back down on that again. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to actually size this up to be about seven inches. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and click on the bottom right hand corner sizing handle and this will adjust the scale of my model and as soon as i click that you'll see that this edit field is now highlighted so i can go ahead and type in seven and then press enter and my horse will be scaled up and then what i want to do is put that back in the middle of my job space so i'm going to go over to my align selected objects tool and we're going to align that to the center of my material and we'll close that down now when i went ahead and scaled that up that most likely adjusted my shape height again. So let's just go ahead and re-verify that. So let's click that again, go to our scale. And yes, it did. It actually scaled up a little bit. So we're just going to go put that back to half an inch and press enter. And there we have it. Great. Now the next part we're going to want to do is to consider how to create our dish. So we're going to go ahead and first of all, add in a zero plane. So that's a zero height component across the top of our material. And to do that, all I need to do is just hover over top. I might create a flat shape component. And if I hold down my shift key while clicking, I'm going to go ahead and add that plane in. And there it is. You can see it there. And it's laying right on top of my modeling plane. And what this essentially will do is it will help to alleviate any kind of machining issues I may have have around the top of my dish that I'm going to create. Okay. I want to point out one other thing about that. If I go to my component tree, you'll see that my component is listed there, my zero plane component. So I can hide and I can show that. If I go to my 2D view, it doesn't show at all. That's because in my layers manager here, you'll see that the zero plane is actually hidden. If I show it, you'll see it. If I hide it again and we do that so that it won't cover up any of your 2d vectors or other components that you may have in your 2d view so let's go back to our 3d view again and back to our design tab now what we're going to need to do is start to prepare some vectors so that we can create a dish shape to start out with so by choosing our horse head 
I'm going to go over here to my design tab again. I'm going to create a vector boundary around selected component. So I'm going to click that. And right now you can't see very much, but if I go ahead and hide my 3D components and show my vectors in my 3D view, there's that vector right there that we have created. So I can go ahead and show my components again. And you can't see it, but it's there. If I just go ahead and click in there, you'll see that I have that vector all around the outside profile of my horse. Now we're going to use these to create the construction vectors for the dish that we're going to start out before we go ahead and modify it with the hand carved look. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to offset that outwards about a half inch. So 0.5 an inch. I'm going to go outwards that. And this will all depend on how deep you would like to make your recess and how far away from your actual component you want it to be. And I think a half inch is pretty good to start out with. You notice that when I created that, I didn't have select new or delete the original. I want to keep those around right now. Now with that original vector selected, I'm going to offset that again, but I'm just going to go 0.1 this time. And we're going to offset that outwards. And then we're going to close that. Now if I go ahead and hide my 3D components, you'll see that we have those three vectors. The original one, the one that I offset it out 0.1 of an inch, and the one that I offset it out 0 0.05 of an inch. And that gives us a nice set of vectors to start to construct our dish with. So let's go ahead and show our 3D components again. Okay, so let's go ahead and hide the horse head just for a moment so we can discuss what we're going to do with these vectors. So we're going to create a dome shape between this ve outside vector here and this inside vector with a flat top on it. That way we have a little bit of space here before we actually get to our relief model. And so when we create this dish shape, it'll have a flat bottom, we'll, which will add a nice little effect to this. We'll actually just have it hand, the hand carved look coming down, a little bit of a flat area, and then you'll be able to meet your relief. And what's nice about that is you get a bit of definition between this flat area and your relief before you actually start to cut it. So it's a nice little feature. So with those two vectors selected, we're going to go over to our create a smooth shape component. Now with that, we're going to choose the blend to inner vector option here, because remember using those two vectors. So we want to blend to the inner vector. And as soon as I click that, we'll get a raised positive shape. And that's kind of what we want. That's kind of hard to see. So to help us see things a little bit better, we're going to go ahead and hide our vectors for a minute. So you'll see that we have this, this straight edge here or the sharp edge, and it's going to round up to the base of our dish. It's nice and flat at the bottom. So let's go ahead and scale this to be 0.5 of an inch. And then what I would like to do is I'd like to have this kind of round in a bit. So at the base of my shape, I want it to be a little bit more smooth. So using the base handle here at the top of my create smooth shape thing, I can just drop this down and you'll see what happens is I'm slowly starting to give myself a nice smooth shape at the top of my dish. And that looks good right there. I like that. So I'm, I'm done with this. So let's go ahead and close this down. And I'm going to go over here to my floating properties dialog box. And we're going to turn this into a subtract component. And that'll make it a true dish. We can close this down. We'll off select that. And let's put our horse head back into our dish again. And we'll see what we have. And that looks pretty good. I like that a lot. Now the next step, we need to go ahead and sculpt the edge of this dish. So it gives it that nice hand carved look. So to do that, I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to select the dish and the zero plane that we created. And we're going to go into our sculpting tool. Right away, we're going to see that this component must be big before we can edit it. And that's OK. So we're going to go ahead and choose OK. And now what we can do is we're going to choose the smudge sculpting tool. And this is really where it comes to personal preference. So your diameter of the tool, you can go ahead and change that if you'd like to, to be whatever you think is best for the scale of your part. That looks pretty decent there. The smoothness and the strength, all that looks really good. And if we want to, if you come up with a brush that you'd like for creating this kind of a job, you can save that off as a preset if you'd like to as well. 
So now, because when we actually came into this sculpting mode, I only had the zero plane in the dish selected, I will actually won't be interacting with the horse head at all. So if I go ahead and unclick show visible model, you'll see this is the only model that I'm gonna be actually sculpting. But having that horse head in place will help me to better visualize how I'm gonna create this sculpted dish. So when I do this, I wanna hold down my left mouse button and I wanna push out, but I want it to be kind of come out directly from the model. So as I'm doing this, I'm gonna come out so we're perpendicular to our actual model, okay? So we're gonna go like this. We're just gonna go ahead and push that out like so as we go along. And if you're not happy with one of the things that you did, you can just go ahead and use your Control Z key on your keyboard that will undo it. And we'll just slowly work around the outside of our horse head here. As you get better at this, it's gonna take you less and less time to do it. And if you happen to have like a Wacom tablet or something like that, then of course, that's gonna help you a lot as well too. But in my case, I'm just using the mouse as I work my way around my horse head. Okay, there we go. So I'm gonna keep that, I'm happy with that. And then I can go ahead and press OK. Now, one last little bit I want to point out is that if you take a look at my horse head, there's a little spot right here. That means that it's a, it's a little spot that's rising above my actual dish. So in some cases, what we'll do is just to kind of alleviate that a little bit, we might select our dish, go into our scale and we're just going to make this just a little bit deeper than what it should be so let's make that like two five press enter and then now that should get rid of that that little area right there and it's only a little bit deeper and in the end that looks great now the last step we need to do is when we come to tool this we're only going to want to cut around this hand carved shape so let's go ahead and turn back on our 2d vectors now we don't need any of these anymore so we're just going to go ahead and delete those out of there okay and we're going to go over to our 2d view that's the only time we're going to need to do this because we're going to select the bitmap representation of our hand carved dish that we just did and we're going to go over to our bitmap trace function and we're just gonna go ahead and make sure that we choose the color option and we're gonna click the white area out here. We'll preview that and we'll apply that and then we'll close this down. We're gonna choose the vector that was created. Now you'll also see there's an outside vector created as well. So we're gonna right click. We're gonna choose to ungroup back onto the original objects layer, hold down our shift key and deselect this vector right here, the vector that we wanna keep and we're gonna press delete on our keyboard. And now we have an outside vector that we can use to go ahead and isolate our 3D tooling to. Now with that, you've got all that you need to go ahead and develop your own tooling for this project. And also you have the knowledge now to create a hand carved dish shape to set any model or model composition into so you can add that rustic feel to your projects.